Uh, some issues that are bubbling away that you need to pick a side on. Mm. So it's in or out. And who's it brought to you by, Jimmy? Uh, Lexus of Blackburn and the all-new Lexus LBX leaves a lasting impression, especially if you spill your coffee in your car. Um, <laughs> positional specialist. Which I am. <laughs> have done. Oh, Aston spilt the sweet and sour sauce on his nuggets right on the glove box. I've got that smell in my car. <laughs> Positional specialists should take priority in the all Australian side instead of squeezing in the best field uh, midfielders in or out. Oh, well, you're rubbing your eyes. For? Oh, I think this is a hard. This is a hard. I reckon it's a bit of both. So I think they have to pick. Probably what's it? The wing is one here, isn't it? So Errol Goulden picks himself. So is the other wingman a wingman? Or is he a midfielder that just happened to play on the wing three times on champion data sheet so we can actually argue that he's a wingman? Yeah, a bit of both. Because you don't want some guys just out there doing cardio, like just, <laughs> just running from point post to point post and we get, oh, look at that, he's ran 18 kilometres. Oh, so fantastic. Does, he's been mm, the boundary umpire. Does uh, Richard's man Massimo D'Ambrosio, does he fit the bill as an All-Australian? Well, he's definitely a winger. But he's played a fair bit half back too. Um, it might be tough for him, but he certainly his name will be mentioned mm-hmm. when they get in that room. And yeah, so he, he they, the way out of this is they name them in the extended, extended squad. squad. Yeah, and then when it comes to the uh, absolute crunch, who would yeah. be the other wingman? Like proper wingman, or or um, mid that would you be happy to squeeze out there? Oh, there'd, there'd be a few. Um, but like Crip, like Crips is going to not be a, then that, you couldn't put Crips there. You couldn't put Heaney there. Bon Templis. But you couldn't put Bon Tempelli there. Dacos. Couldn't really put Dacos there. Could you? You can't name him on the wing. That, he hasn't even, <laughs> he hasn't ventured out of the square. He's just gone. <laughs> I'm just trying to find a name. Yeah. Well, Merritt. Gonna, yeah. Merritt. They might, Kelly hasn't played enough games. I don't think he's missed a few, but he was flying early. Yeah, he was. So anyway, do you pick another half back up there? Yeah, maybe. Put like a Whitfield or someone. I don't think he, he was there on the weekend for five minutes, wasn't he? But Does Bon Templis and Warner get half forward flanks, even though they've come through they the could. midfield? And, I, I, and they've both kicked 30 goals. I think much? I think that's absolutely possible. Mm. Absolutely possible. Is, uh, that at least one of them would be in that position. Uh, so we're in or out? Oh, inish. We're in, yeah. We're inish. Inish. There is no flag favourite in 2024, in in or out. What a good question. Well done, Rich. Well done, Richie. Yeah. Um, Well, I mean, there there is a flag favourite, but is it, who is it? Is it Brisbane at the moment? So, yeah, that's in. I don't think there's a clear favourite. No, I don't think there. I think that's a good, that's in. Um, This comes from. He finally got one. This comes from Richard from Glen Ferry slash Dingley. Sides are wearing too many different jumper designs. Hawthorne has worn seven different (laughs) jumpers in or out. Only seven. I think they could, could find more. In. There's got to be a cap, sure. Yeah, I'm in on that too. And if I'm on the AFL, I'm probably actually getting involved in that now. Yeah, yeah. So come on. Right, come on, let's yeah. sell it in. Yep. Um, the Eagles finished the blue season in or out. Surely they don't. I'm, sure. tempt, I'm tempted to go in. Like, they're not, they've won two in a row. They're a much better team over there. Yeah. Oscar Allen looks like he's finally got over here. Yeah. His last few weeks have been really good because obviously coming off the year. Looks like Plug is going to stay, Waterman. Yeah. And he's the gonna, big W tram. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to finish <laughs> the season. In, I, I think they can. I, I like just from a. I hope they. I hope Carlton win from yeah. a. Just for the you know the, the the what they've gone through this year, but I think that's a fifty fifty. Yeah, fifty fifty. But you can't treat Port as a genuine threat until they make a grand final. Well, that makes you a genuine threat right. if you make it to yeah. a grand final. Not one of the better questions. No, it? it was pretty ordinary. No. He's. He's out on the question. Yeah. The but, pre- but can I get, we should give Port some credit because a lot of teams on the weekend, they just, they were the favorite team. They just go and get the, get it done. Just go and get the W no matter how they did it. Yep. They weren't super impressive. Melbourne had a plan and executed it pretty well. Um, you know, dealing with being the favorite is, is clearly too much for a few clubs at the moment, yep. but they got there and they, and they, uh, and they won the game. So uh, well done to them. Yep. Uh, the pre-finals buy is going to make this year even closer. I'm in on that because momentum has been – it will help some sides who are spluttered to the line mm. just go, hang on, let's reset. And it might hinder some sides who just want to keep playing because they've finally got their footy mojo back. I've got no idea. Like, how, would you, <laughs> how, how would you know whether it's going to help a, help a team or not? 
Who's going to benefit? Actually, it's a good question. Who's going to benefit the most from it potentially? Do you think just that extra week and the refresh? Maybe the Swans. Yeah, because it's another week. Can Papley will that week help him? Yeah, I mean, there's a few that are on that sort of it, like yeah, McInerney and Papley and all those mm. sort of ones. And yep. De Koning for Carlton, but they may or may not be there. Mm. Alex, where are you, man? At home, meal prepping. But it's Sunday. Run day. Sunday? Yeah. Remember Sundays? Sundays aren't for chopping and prepping. They're for finding balance. They're for lifting. They're for climbing! 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 And for letting off steam. So skip the meal prep and take back Sundays with my muscle chef. All right, so send your questions to Ask Eddie and Jimmy Footy on Nine Facebook or X. This is where we get a little bit of uh, hashtag feedback. Yes, hashtag um, Ask Eddie and Jimmy. J- James says, enjoying the show. He didn't actually say that, but do you think <laughs> do, you, do you think the VFL sh- shall or should maybe is it reduce the number of clubs to make it more competitive as 21 is too much? 21? How did we get to 21? Because we've kept a lot of the um, – like other, oh, this is the V. Sorry, the, the VFL. I, I thought he was actually like, do you, do you know calling the, the AFL the VFL. So I've misinterpreted that. Do you know in the room of the butcher's paper, right? Yep. This is another great uh, little uh, thought bubble that got out, snuck under the door. So when they brought that VFL back in, so we've got you know Southport playing, and of course uh, a few down here like Williamstown and all that sort of stuff. And they got all the AFL teams now who want their two side, and they thought we've got this new Eastern Seaboard competition, and. It's all brand new, and we're going to rename it. Do you know what name they come up with? The VFL. The VFL. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding oh, I me? I think it's bizarre. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And obviously there's, there's the history and the tradition associated with the name, but the emotional side of the um, of the tradition <coughs> and the history with the VFL is actually the VFA. I mean, yes. the VFA is – they'd be better I, – I, I haven't thought this through, but they'd be better off – Creating a VFA if you want to have that and have as many of those clubs as possible if you could if if that works in the development and maybe it doesn't but yeah some sort of just the reserves or whatever we want to call it I actually think it's quite good like in this world of mm. content um, you know being king and all that like it's there's there's a lot you talk to clubs about their websites they get enormous traffic mm. around their VFL team and around you know their AFL players and how they perform and, and I think it does all right for seven in the various markets. So I think there's value in having a really good second tier competition. Well, with clubs pushing to go back to the, the VFL, <laughs> the clubs pushing going to the old traditional reserves competition. Yep. Will there be? Do you think we'll have AFL, AFL reserves, and call all those other teams? So not going back to the VFL, but it will have those VFL teams plus Southport. Plus there might be another one out of New South Wales. There might be. Um, uh, one or two out of South Australia, whatever, because the pair want to come into the VFL because they, they want the reserves yep. competition. So could we could we have a competition like that? Yeah, I, again, I have it's it. almost splitting. I'm just trying to. It just throw becomes all James becomes a logistical thing and a money thing, I suppose. And that's why I say I think the content maybe helps pay for it a little mm. bit. There could be some some rights in there, but yeah, it's a it is a compli- It is no doubt it's a complicated thing. Um, and it's another one of those issues around the, the fairness, isn't it, with the, with the non-Victorian teams. Um, Paul asked, who are the candidates to replace Benny Gall at Richmond? It's been a funny process, this one, hasn't it, in terms of names. The only external names that we've really heard mentioned were Xavier Campbell, which I don't think in the end he was interested in, and uh, Chris Davies, who's ruled from Port Adelaide, who's ruled himself out. So my read on that is that they will end up with an internal candidate. Simon Matthews. Simon Matthews is the most logical one. So, and I think we'll get an. Well, I think we might even know in the next couple of days. Maybe Ray Gun. Ray Gun. Ray Gun. Nowhere. <laughs> From nowhere. Ray just doing the silly salmon on the side of Punt Road. I hadn't didn't consider that, but mm. um, yeah, we've already had the question from David about right, you uh, asked Amanda's to me. Jimmy, this is from Amanda. Hi, Jimmy. I'm a Bombers right. fan, and I blame you for this. <laughs> you said we were different this year. You saw us winning a final. Besides jinxing our season, give me something to look forward to. What is there to look forward to as a Bombers fan in the coming years? Where is the good? Well, you get the jump on school holidays. Could I read that any slower? <laughs> you get the jump oh. on school holidays on the Gold Coast. Okay. No, that's no, good. No. 
Hi, Amanda. My apologies. <laughs> it wasn't a jinx. I thought you were different. No, there are a lot of numbers that are different, but yeah, you need to improve your inside forward 50 conversion. I had you beating 15th, 14th, 13th, and 12th on the ladder. <laughs> so that's why I thought I had you in the finals and winning one and maybe getting a side that was a bit fatigued getting there and you would have you know, got your first final win. My biggest apologies. Um, I think Hutto touched on it a little bit earlier. I think they've got some big decisions to make mm. around list and football department structure and things like that because clearly this is Brad Scott's first full year, of course. I know he had the, the year previous, but you sort of inherit a lot of things. I, w- I wonder how much change he'll want to do, not only on the list, but his football department after having – Yeah. It's a really well, good watch. They see. made that – yeah, they made a lot of changes, added a huge amount to development um, – which David Barham was talking about when we interviewed him pre-game when things were going much better before all those losses. and He was praising everyone in that interview. He was. He picked a very good time to do that interview. Mm. So, yeah, big decisions to be made with the Bombers. I, um, oh, hang on. Amanda sent in a follow-up email. Oh, really? Th- <laughs> really? Hi, Jimmy. Thanks for your reply. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't satisfy me. <laughs> what else do you want, Amanda? No, oh, I, no I understand. No, I understand. no. Um, no, no, you did. You answered it fine. Yes. There's, there's not much. There's not much you can say. 